Good afternoon, everybody. We still have a couple minutes before class starts. So while you are waiting, if you want to make sure you have the January 26th lecture notes uh, pulled up and that unit four reference sheet, if I have not posted that. Um, so just make sure you have the January 26th uh, lecture notes pulled up so that way you can follow along and have the correct outside information. We'll get started in just a minute. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Um, while we're waiting, just as a heads up, AP government, there we go. I'll just wait for everybody else to come in. Messiah's here. Aaron is here. Isis is here. Sorry, just taking attendance. Jade, Ariana. Eric is here. We'll get started in just one minute. If anybody has any questions or concerns, feel free to throw those in the, in the chat anytime. Um, great, we'll go ahead and get started. So um, something you might have noticed is on Google Classroom, I did post uh, this week's homework. This week's homework is um, another set of key terms. Should be excited that those only happen a few times, like a couple times a month. Um, so those have been posted, the chapter and a graph that has all of the key terms and the pages where you can find them has been posted on uh, that assignment. And that is going to be due next Monday at 8 a.m. So you guys have a week to do it. So just make sure you are getting that homework done. Um, if you have any questions about the homework, feel free to let me know at any time. It's again, just the definition and significance. Okay, we will go ahead and get started. Just as a reminder of our norms, make sure your camera is off and your microphone is on and that we're using the task on, um, using the chat on task and make sure you're ready for warm and cold call. Exit ticket is due at the end of the class. And again, the homework has been posted and that will be due um, a week from today. So it's due next Monday at uh, 8 a.m. We're now gonna transition into the do now, which is five multiple choice questions. So you will have five minutes. Cameras on, microphones off. Yes, cameras on, microphones off, the normal expectation. Uh, might have misspoke. Five minutes on the do now. Go ahead and get started. It is just some multiple choice. Five minutes, chat me if you have any questions.
three more minutes on the do now. Three more minutes. Ninety more seconds on the do now. Forty five more seconds to finish up. Okay, let's go ahead and come back together and we're going to quickly review the do now. Okay, number one is B. Number two is A. Number three is A. Number four is C. Number five is D. If you have any questions, go ahead and raise your hand. Okay, I do not see any hands going up. So, but if you come up with questions about the do now later, feel free to chat me or email me at any time. We're now going to transition into today's main content, which is going to be about polling and how we get these ideas of uh, what people feel about politics. Last week, we looked at an overview of the really common political ideologies like conservatism, leftism, all of those different things in this country and began to consider how people form those ideas. Today, we are actually going to be focusing on how polit politicians or special interest groups are able to measure public opinion, which inevitably influences elections, policies, lawmaking, et cetera. Opinion polls tell us not only what people's views are on certain topics and issues, 
but they also help us gauge the outcomes of elections. That is how we're able to predict how things are going to go. It's important that you know how to be informed, how you how to be informed on consuming political inform polling information. Cannot talk today. So that way you can decide for yourself if a poll is trust if a poll is trustworthy. Today we're going to become more informed consumers by first understanding one how polling is conducted and two how public opinion is measured. Tomorrow we're going to review how and why some of those polls have been inaccurate by identifying what to look for in a poll to ensure it's trustworthy. So again, today is going to be how polling is conducted and how it's measured. Tomorrow is going to be how and why these polls have been inaccurate. You're going to transition to the hook, which is on page three. Nope, on page two of your classwork, where we have two specific polls from this uh, past election. I want you to take two minutes to review this these polls and answer the question, how do you think Pew Research Organization gathered this data and who do they likely poll to find it? Take two minutes to review these polls and answer that question on page two. Go ahead and get started. One more minute. Great, go ahead and finish up. Let's start with the first part of the question. How do we think the Pew Research Organization got this data? How do we think they got it? And I hear from Nazaya and then Ziara. Um, I said they got the data from polling like to the minority population specifically because if you look to the graph on the right, more of it's saying that Biden's conduct was excellent. And when you look at the laws and the policies that he's been passing, it's been targeted more like the minority populations or the underrepresented. And then when you look at Trump, it's more poor because he was not like trying to help out all of the citizens within the nation. Mm -hmm. Great, and Zira, can you jump in? Um, I would say to build up what Nazaya said, that if you look at these graphs, you can clearly tell the difference between which sides were basically represented in both of them. So like the darker brownish color was the ones that were mostly picked for, for the other ones. And the greenish color was like the one that was picked for different sides, but mm, I don't know. 
Uh, can I take, uh, does anybody else want to jump in? Go ahead, Nyasia. Maybe they could have just like sent out like a survey, I guess you can say, because mm -hmm. this past election, I believe there was like more um, mail in, I guess you could. So they probably like sent out surveys and then you just like say like what party you are from because they organize it based off party and then like your opinion on each of the questions and then got the percentage from that. Awesome. So in today's document analysis, you're going to see that we have two a little bit longer uh, documents that are talk that are articles talking about polling. And then for document three, we have like an example of what these polls are. So the first two documents are describing polling, what it is, the different types and how it's done. And then the last one is like an example of what polling is. Obviously what we know about polling, you cannot poll every single citizen of the United States. Like there's no way to it, poll everybody, set, have them say what their opinion is on a certain political figure, let alone all of the different things that polling is done on and get accurate data. So a lot of polling is subjective because you are choosing who to poll, you're choosing where to poll, you're choosing which type of poll to use. So that is why some people have mixed feelings on polling. And so that is what is going to tar uh, what we are going to target in today's discourse with the question, is the way public opinion is measured useful? So is polling useful is our ultimate question for the day. You're gonna have 12 minutes of uh, independent work time. There's no source line tracker today. So you are just annotating using your highlighting feature, uh, side comments, whichever uh, you are the most comfortable with. I will be jumping in and out of everybody's documents to make sure that we are uh, moving along. And you're just going to be annotating, looking for the claim and the main ideas of these documents. If you have any questions as we annotate, feel free to reach out to me in the chat. 12 minutes, you should spend about five minutes on each of the first two documents and then the last two looking at the piece of data. Chat me if you have any questions. You have 12 minutes to read these documents. I'll be jumping in and out of your Google Docs. Go ahead and get started.
nine more minutes, nine more minutes. really like these annotations that I'm seeing as I'm coming through the documents. Six and a half more minutes. Make sure you're continuing to annotate as you go to document two so I can see that you're actively reading the documents. You have four more minutes left.
two more minutes, two more minutes. Uh, just as a reminder for document three, document three is just an example of polling data. So you're not like trying to get a traditional significant statement out of it. You're just looking at what this looks like. Like what is notable? What are the trends? That is time, but I see some of us are still reading. If you need more time uh, to finish reading the documents, can you just hold up like a one or a two with how many minutes you need? Two minutes. Okay, I have some of us are done. Anybody else need more time? Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and go into discourse because it looks like most of us are ready. So looking at these documents, I want to start with the general question. Is polling useful? There are good and bad things about it, but is polling useful? I want to see a yes or a no in the chat. Got to choose one, no in between. So in the chat, if you had to choose, is polling yes, is polling useful? Yes or no? Go ahead and drop it in the chat. Got one, yes, two, three, four, <laughs> five. <laughs> maybe some un maybe some not totally convinced yeses, but mostly yeses. Okay, so it looks like we're mostly yes. Why, why choose yes? Can I hear from Malachi and then Aaron? Why is polling? Can repeat the question? Why is polling useful? Why did you choose yes? Well, like the article was saying, there are multiple ways of polling. So I guess it's like everybody has a voice with polling but it depends on how you poll i guess mm -hmm. go ahead and jump in aaron aaron can you unmute and jump in sorry, sorry. Um, no worries Up. Here, Aaron, if you want to drop it in the chat, it sounds like you're having some microphone issues. Um, okay, let me hear from Yamani. Why is polling useful? Well, for me, I really couldn't decide. And then I saw also another reason why I think polling is like a good idea because like you have like those people who can't make a decision and so like they'll just go with anything. So you have like the mass majority 
most of the time they'll agree with it and then pulling allows for people who do know how to make a decision to have their voice be heard. Interesting. So what I'm noticing in terms of the chat and the general conversation is like, we know polling is useful. Like we should be polling. What are the flaws in polling? What are the things that stop polling from being effective? Let me hear from Erica and then Ariana. I think that the same reasons why polling is good is the same reasons why it can be bad. Like it can give you a sense of underrepresented people and just really like hear what you think that people are thinking. But when it's not accurate and people are moving things accordingly to polls, it doesn't have a good effect. But when it is accurate and moving accordingly, I think it does. So I think the good is the same as the bad. Ariana, are you able to jump in? Or are you still having mic issues? Thanks, Ariana. Can you put that, uh, Aaron and Ariana, can you guys put your uh, replies in the group chat so that way everybody can see your ideas? Uh, Nyasia, would you mind jumping in? What are the flaws of polling? Um, polling is flawed because not all voices are heard. Like you, not everybody's gonna respond because in doc two, it was saying um, that like some groups wouldn't answer. Like it says pollsters have also had an increase the number of times that they call numbers back, trying to get a completion despite these efforts to achieve a random sample though. Response rates remain shockingly low, especially among younger people, Spanish speakers, evangelicals and African-Americans. So even if you try to get like a unique sample, not everybody's gonna respond. So voices aren't being heard, which makes it inaccurate to like the entire population. Mm -hmm. And that is something that is talked about in document two. And I want us to brainstorm in the chat. The second document kind of tells us who is left out in polling, who is left out of polling. Like in the, sorry, let me rephrase that. In the chat, let's brainstorm. Who is typically left out of polling? Whose voices are we not heard? Be really specific in your examples. Go ahead and take 30 seconds to brainstorm in the chat. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great examples, you guys. Can I have, can I have Nazaya and then Isis build on their response? Sorry, Nazaya, I hope you're not calling on you like mid-bite. <laughs> um, I said specifically the Blacks and the women, but like the Blacks, I would say like specifically the men because they're seeming like they're the more superior ones within the genders. But then when it comes to like versus the genders, it's more women are not because the women were just getting this right to vote. So it's like, they're still underrepresented. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. And I have said based on document two, the people who don't like use social media or have technology like that because not everybody is gonna have access to the polls if they're all online and tech. Yeah, technical or whatever. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it, it and there's like if somebody doesn't have access to a, to polling, then we're not going to hear their voices, which means who typically is not going to have access to like a landline or the internet. Like who are those people? Go and throw that in the chat. Whose voices are not being heard because they just can't participate in an internet poll. Awesome. Yes, uh, people that are uh, below the poverty line, homeless people, that's a really great example. Yes, Malachi, people that live in the country in the more rural areas that just don't have access to internet. I went and saw my Nana over who lives in Southern Virginia. She's a very normal middle-class white lady, but she doesn't have it like she doesn't have cell service at her house because the south still just has that so she has a very she's typically somebody that would be represented but she just doesn't have access to that 
Who else? Older people, yes. Older people are going to be a little bit discomforting or, or a little bit more uncomfortable with like the internet and things like that. So they may not participate in those polls. So thinking about these people that we just thought about who cannot poll, what is polling useful? If these populations are not being represented, is polling useful? And people that are part of these populations can vote Republican or Democrat. It doesn't necessarily help one party or the other. What do we think? Let me see, let me see hands. Come on, guys. Let's see some hands. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Erica and the Niasia. <laughs> I think it can be destructive when underrepresented um, people aren't represented in polling because it can discourage them for voting and feel like they're not being heard and um, feel like, like there's no point in investing in politics because why would people care about um, people who aren't being represented in the media and stuff like that, so yeah. I agree. I think that it can't really be useful because America is a diverse or like wherever you use polling, like countries are very diverse. And if you're not hearing some, well, a lot of these voices within the polls, then you can't really get a good sense of where each community will lies. Like everybody's different, but if you get like these different groups of people's opinions because a lot of these laws that are being made will affect these groups of people that opinions are not being heard in these polls. And Isis, go for it. Um, I agree and I wanted to just say what Erica had said earlier. Basically, if not everybody is gonna be heard, then if they're making decisions based on that poll, and trying to like make things based on that. Not everybody's opinion is gonna be heard and not everybody's gonna agree with what's going on because they didn't have access to answer the questions for that specific law or whatever that they're trying to put in place. So it's gonna make it very difficult for people to make like decisions. Mm -hmm. I want us to brainstorm for one minute. So in the chat for one minute, I want you to brainstorm on this question. What are the consequences of inaccurate polling? What do we think some of these consequences could be? We've said that people's voices aren't being heard. That's true, but I want us to get very specific. What are some consequences of inaccurate polling? Take one minute in the Zoom chat, go ahead and get started. What are some consequences? Mm-hmm. Great, 10 more seconds to keep brainstorming. Can I hear from Kasia and then Erica to build on what you guys shared in your in the chat? Um, I said that Trump will say that it's fake news because he doesn't believe that they're accurate. Yes, like because the data doesn't represent what he sees or what he thinks. So like the people that are coming to his rallies, they're not the ones getting polled because they're the ones that don't have access to polling. So he sees all these people showing up to his rallies, but they're not being represented in the polls that he experienced later. So it's like this biased, and then he can use the, it's fake news justification. And Erica, did you wanna jump in? 
Um, I agree that's true when the pollings are true, then uh, it can lead to people claiming that it's not. When the pollings are actually fake, I said it can lead to division because like this whole Republican versus Democrat um, initiative, like I feel like when Democrats feel like they're underrepresented, then it's the Republicans fault and when Republicans and vice versa. So um, I feel like people are too attached to polling and allow it to dictate their feelings way too much. And in that way, it can cause discord. Mm -hmm. We are going to go more into detail with this tomorrow, looking at some actual polling data that is incorrect. Trump was not supposed to win in 2016, according to the polls. And we saw what that happened. <laughs> Hillary was totally projected to win. And a lot of people like me fell for it. So we're gonna talk about examples like that and many others where polling was totally inaccurate. So we're gonna talk about that and a moment with FDR. So like this has been happening for almost hundred years. Polling inaccuracies have always happened. So we're gonna talk about that tomorrow, but let's transition to that exit ticket, six multiple choice questions graded for accuracy. So make sure you don't rush your way through it. Uh, chat me if you have any questions, but once you turn in your exit ticket and your class packet, you are free to go. Again, exit ticket is graded on accuracy, so make sure you take your time and you don't rush through.